Hi, okay, so today we're going to talk a little bit about um, Google Research and uh, Google Scholar Research. So um, I'll tell you a couple of things that I did because I have um, prepared this a little bit so that it goes faster. All right, so one thing was I did several different searches. I'm trying to find cases which discuss the California business records exception. Okay, I wanted to find that. Um, and what I know, but what y'all don't know is that uh, for business records exception, there's not going to be much difference between the um, cases involving the state criminal law cases, in other words, uh, versus civil law cases. But in most kinds of the law, there will be a distinction between them. And so when I did my search for California business records exception, I found a bunch of state versus, you know, this or that. Okay. So I didn't like that. Um, I happened, I tried it first under Google, regular Google. I didn't like my results there. So then I came to Google Scholar because I wanted to try something different. Okay. And what I wanted to try different there was I wanted um, not to have the word California in the search. Okay. So how would I do that? I would come down, I'd go to Google Scholar and I would um, not look for, I would go for case law and not articles. Case law and then I didn't want federal courts because federal courts would be all the federal courts and I didn't want any federal law. I wanted California law. So I clicked on California courts. Okay. And I took all of them and then I've done this search. Um, I decided that I did the, the search as uh, California business records exception. I didn't like that. So then I went to business records exception elements and elements is a word um, that courts like to use for parts. Okay. It's the things that you have to prove. And so, um, this was just a refinement of the search and you'll notice that this is page four. And so again, I had many, um, cases involving criminal law, which I just rejected without even looking at. I saw a bunch of other cases. The way you look is you look at this, this language here and you see kind of what's going on. Do they talk about, um, you know, do they talk about crime, in which case you're talking about a, a criminal case, um, or do they talk about something that looks like it's going to be useful to you, all right? So in this case, finally, I, I settled on Taggart versus Super Seer. Now notice this is page four. So you're coming in uh, after 15 minutes or more of my search, just so that you get the, don't get the idea that this is like automatic or necessarily very easy. It's not hard, but um, it can be difficult to find the case that you want. See, I mean, especially um, in an evidence case like this, and the hearsay rule is a question of evidence, um, you're going to find a lot of people versus. That means uh, it's a criminal case, okay? Or that it involves government in some way or the other. Usually uh, it's a criminal case, okay? So Taggart versus Superseer doesn't sound like a criminal case. You see that they're talking about an argument about whether documents were admissible under the business records exception to the hearsay rule. And um, let's see. Yeah, this is a 1995 case, so it's not super ancient. Okay, and that helps too. So let's go. Now we're going to click on this and see what we show up, show up with. Okay. Um, 1995 case again, as I say, we're highlighting the business records exception. And as you can see, since this is California appeals or California reporter, that we are talking about California law or that we probably are, um, you know, immediately as we look at it. Okay. So, and this one follows a fairly standard, uh, approach. It's going to, there's going to be like an, uh, an overall view of the case. Then we're probably going to talk about facts. Here's the facts. We're going to pass over these for now, but when you, if this is a case that talks about what you want, you will want to look at the facts. Uh, not the facts of the litigation of the, um, you know, that gave rise to the litigation probably, but uh, if they talk about the records. Okay. And so, for example, here, this part 
where they're talking about records may prove to be interesting if this uh, case in general is something that you're interested in. Okay, so now what we want to do, uh, admissibility of the test reports. Now that's going to be talking about the legal analysis. So this is the part we can, we perk up in and we're now we're looking for business records exception. And here we are, here we are on all the way down here. Okay. And uh, notice that this says this 1704. That means that this is page 1704 um, of the California reporter. So this is the page you're going to refer to um, when you see it, so 1697 Taggart versus Superseer, 33 Calap, 4th, uh, 1697, and then you're going to say comma 1704, and then you're going to look down here and you're going to you're going to take a look at the business records exception. Since it's 1271, we know this is the section that we're interested in, um, and you will probably want to do if you're from California, you will probably want to look up section uh, 1271 and the uh, evidence, the code of evidence. Okay. But in addition, now we're going to talk, let's take a quick look at this and um, talk about whether these things were admissible under the business records exception. And we're just looking for a statement about what the business records exception is. All right. And you you find that out just by reading down and around the, um, the highlighted text, parts of the text, okay? So the plaintiffs are contending that certain records were admissible, uh, but the court is going to find that they're all inadmissible. And so we're going to take a quick look down there. So here's, here's the rule that they're supposed to uh, follow, okay? And now here's a footnote that you're probably going to want to check on, okay? And we're going to just follow through. Um, and down here we come to something which is really interesting. A custodian's declaration could state all the matters required um, and yet fail to provide a, a foundation for the admission of the records, okay? Under tw section 1271, you should, this is the part that's really critical, okay? So you're going to want to read this and know it. You're going to want to copy this case. If you're in California, and you're going to want to follow these links and footnotes to follow through um, on what, what it is. Because what happened in this case is they decided that none of these records were admissible because um, the, the person seeking to admit the records did not, in fact, testify uh, to everything that needed to be testified to. And so this is a, a perfect... Um, this is a perfect way for you, example of looking at each thing that they testify and knowing, you know, where they fall short and then making your argument. So this, this is going to be a perfect case for anybody in California to start with, okay, in understanding uh, the way the business records exception to the hearsay rule works and how it, it sometimes fails to work. All right. Um, so that should help you if you're in California, this will be a specifically helpful, but if you're not in California, you're going to do the same kind of search you're going to do. Um, you know, it turns out for that's for something as basic as the, um, the business records exception, you, you might try business records exception elements and do your search in your own state in Google and Google prime. Now, uh, remember again, that I tried this in regular Google and I had, and I tried it with California in the terms. Those are, those are strategies that you might well use. Um, but in this particular case involving the um, business records exception, that didn't work. So I um, honed down the search a little bit, went for business records exception elements and chose a database in Google Scholar that was just California law and then looked to make sure that it was a California case because it didn't have to be, but it usually is when it's California law, um, made sure that it was a case involving California law and an interpretation of it 
and um, and then went from there. Looked at the at the cases, and um, and did my search. Now it's a mistake to think this is going to be so easy that um, it doesn't take work. I got to this case after. 20 minutes or 30 minutes maybe of looking for other examples and uh, conducting other searches so you got to take your time you got to look through the cases once you get into a case like this one it's going to take you as you saw below um, as you saw uh, down here in the discussion part it's going to take you uh, to a number of other um, cases that you can use all right so um you'll be following you'll be looking at these footnotes these footnotes probably rep reply um, refer to uh, other courts and cases and so once you get into once you find a case like this you will just be able to follow links that you get in in this case and in the cases that you uh, connect with to find what you're what you're looking for okay and as you um, do your search in general you're going to discover that you understand the re the reason for the rule because the courts all go through that they discuss um, the way the rule is supposed to work and how come it doesn't work sometimes and why the rules developed as they did um, if you follow these links and you read a bunch of these cases, you'll come out knowing the rule very well. Okay, so uh, that's all for this one right now. Um, this was a, uh, a search. We wanted to find the California business records exception, what it is the other has to, side has to show, and we wanted a case, ideally, where they didn't show everything. And so we finally found one, and uh, you can do the same. Okay, bye-bye.